Hi folks, Jason Webster here. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Inside PTI. Hey, today I thought we'd talk about a trial that we were working on in 2022. It was a new trial for us and it involved an at-plant micronutrient study. Now, the whole idea with this study was to see if we could actually apply, apply a micronutrient, a dry micronutrient product at a very low rate at plant. And you're probably wondering, well, why would you want to do this? Well, we thought, you know, a lot of growers have insecticide boxes on their planters. And the whole idea in my mind was maybe we could figure out a way to put a dry micronutrient in a system, you know, similar to an insecticide box system, run it through the 2020 and apply a very low rate of micronutrients on the planter. And uh, this was originally designed talking with growers that, that were saying there's no way in the world we're ever going to go to a liquid program on the planter. And we do have some growers that fight us on this saying, hey, we just don't want to put tanks and pumps on a planter and I don't have enough labor to, to tender it, don't have the right equipment for multiple fills throughout the day. And so this is kind of for this market, I guess, and, and trying to figure out, okay, so if we don't go liquid on a planter, but yet we still need the micronutrients, how are we going to do it? Could we do it in a low-rate fashion where we only have to fill maybe once a day and still be effective trying to increase yield and return on investment? So that was the whole idea behind this first-year study at the PTI farm. Here's a picture of a research planner that we created. Again, we, we took off the insecticide boxes. We put on Gandy boxes with hydraulic motors just so we could play around with different densities of product. We could meter them very accurately. And again, we're, we're just collecting data. It, this is investigation at this point. Seeing if we can do this, seeing if we can find a dry micronutrient, not only to, to do well agronomically and economically, but can we do it in a practical way on the, on the planner? And so, again, we're just gathering data at this point, seeing that if this will work. You see the Gandy boxes on here. We've got our plastic hoses that, that come down, and, and, and we're, 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 we're applying the product between our closing system. Um, but it is an at-plant at banded dry micronutrient situation here. Here's a little video of it going through the field. You see those, those white hoses coming down, and that's where we're applying our various micronutrients that we selected to test this past year. Again, this is abandoned since it's very low rate. You know, we, we only want to fill once a day, so it's a low rate. We're going to band it right over the row to be as efficient as we can with it. And the application point is between the first and second stage of our furrow force closing system. So with that, you will get a little bit of incorporation but, but not much. Our initial thoughts with, with this system is it worked very well. It was accurate, did a great job, but it was too bulky. It was overdone and probably not real practical for most growers. But that doesn't matter because, again, we're just in that investigative mode where we're just trying to figure out will it actually increase yield and increase profit. So um, we test this long enough, we find something that works, then we figure out how to make this thing practical and easy to use for farmers. But until then, it's just figuring out if it works or not. We were looking at low application rates of 5 and 10 pounds per acre. Again, one-time fill, that's it is what we're looking at with this. We're looking at micronutrients, including sulfur, boron, zinc, iron, magnesium, manganese, calcium, and even potassium. Although when I think of potassium, that could be a higher rate product, which may mean more fills during the day. But nonetheless, we wanted to play around with some different formulations just to see if we could get response. Here's some of the products that we tested. We had a product from Winfield United, a product from Verdesian, uh, we've got a company called Solios that we're, we were working on a corn blend. The Anderson supplied us with a Micromark DG Humic. We'll talk about that one more here in a minute. Winfield United gave us another product. It was just a corn mix LS. And then we worked with Midwestern Bioag on a 555 product. But you can see the different um, micronutrients that are in these, the blend of it. But we took these to the field in 2022 for the first time and tried to evaluate these at a five and a 10 pound rate per acre um, application. Here's the results of the five pound rate. And really the two that stuck out the most to us was the Micromark DG Humic from the Andersons 
and the Verdesian product, the MicroSync Complete. Those did pretty well. Um, yield increases 7.2 to 3.5 bushel and showed some ROI of 12 to almost $40 an acre. So those two probably stuck out the best to us in regard to response at the 5-pound rate. However, a little bit better response at the 10-pound rate. Look at this. The Anderson's product running up to a 17-bushel yield gain. The Verdesi and MicroSync at, at just under 10 bushel. And there's some pretty nice ROIs um, here, you know, anywhere from 40 to $90 per acre. So this is what we were looking at. Can we get a response from these, these you know, the dry micronutrient on the planter? And I do believe we saw some nice responses this year. It's interesting to look at the revenue gain from this. You know, we keep track of the things that make us the most money um, here at the PTI farm. And this one, at the 10-pound rate, the, the, the Anderson's Micromark DG actually came in at number six at $93 an acre um, net profit. So um, it made our top 10 list. It was really interesting looking at this for a first-time study here at the PTI farm. I wanted to kind of gauge growers. So as we traveled around our PTI farm winter tour in January, February, and March, we asked 870 growers, would you be interested in applying a low-rate micronutrient product on the planter? 17% said, no, we're not interested in this at all. Um, don't want to go that direction. 15% said, yes, we would be very interested in this. It would be right up our alley. But the biggest group, the largest group, understandably, 69% uh, said, yes, they would be interested if it would show yield and economic gain um, in the field. So we've only got one year data. We're going to continue to work on this and see if we can continue um, increasing yield and ROI. It, it was interesting, though, when I, I did ask growers, you know, the same growers, I said, you know, uh, matter of fact, we had a few more. We had 1,438 growers that actually chimed in on, on this survey question. If you could ban a, a dry micronutrient on the planter, what micronutrient would you go after? What would you be most interested in applying? And the top three were sulfur, boron, and zinc. And these are going to be the same micronutrients that the guys with liquid components on their planter are going after as well. So I was not surprised by this. Those are the big three, and, and that's exactly what we're looking at. These, those are three micronutrients that we would love to have in these dry uh, formulations on the planter. So today's Inside PTI agronomy tip of the day is dry micronutrient at plant applications were very interesting this past year at the PTI farm in 2022. We do plan on continuing this study to understand the advantages of banding a low rate dry micronutrient fertilizer on the planter and then comparing it to traditional or typical liquid starter fertilizer programs on the planter as a comparison. In the future, I think this could be really interesting to combine the efforts of maybe an accurate soil testing program for micronutrients and then implementing variable rate applications to balance soil fertility levels in the field. As we look at different ratios of different nutrients, variable rate application could be key, but we have to do a better job of soil testing for micronutrients to understand what levels we're at. Well, that's all the time we have for today's episode of Inside PTI. If you have any questions about anything we, that we've talked about here today, shoot me an email at insidepti at precisionplanning.com or stop by and talk to your local Precision Planning Premier dealer. They'd love to talk to you about this as well. In the meantime, we'll see you on the next episode of Inside PTI. Thanks so much for watching.